Okay, I wanted to make a video to get my uh, to continue to work on the Belleville Running Club uh, website that I started up uh, a week ago. Now, you know, in my class, this is a project that I'm doing in the AWD 111 course. And last week, what I did was I did uh, I started an issue tracker project. <coughs> Excuse me, where I did code demonstrations really to get the class started at working on the issue tracker. Uh, but kind of moving forward, what I'm going to do, instead of doing an ash, another issue tracker uh, for my coding demonstrations, I'm going to I'm going to do my coding demonstration on this Belleville Running Club website and take all the, 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 the theory and the concepts that you'll need for the issue tracker and bring them into um, Belleville Running Club. And so um, this is just a, this is gonna be a kind of a quick video where, where I just get my running club site um, up to date with uh, a few more things. And so this is, these are gonna be kind of review concepts, things that we did last week, but I'm just catching it up to my issue tracker and I'm not going to do everything. I'm, I'm, in fact, I'm not even going to have like arrays of objects because where we're going to is we're going to start working with databases pretty soon. So I would just call this a maintenance, um, a little bit of coding that I'm going to do to kind of bring this up to speed with with where we left off. And so one of the things that that we need to do is install some different dependencies. And so I'm going to install things like dot uh, env right and this is going to allow me to have uh, variables inside of a an environment variable file uh, inside of a dot env file and so you can kind of see here if I create oh by the way you know you don't have to code along with this to my students this this would be something I would watch uh, for a refresher but you do not have to uh, code along on this project and I could just have uh, some variable you know call it name now equal to Gudmestead so this is creating an environment variable called name with the value of Gudmestead and if I were to uh, make a start dev I might I might just call it my dev script um, let's go ahead and just call it a dev npm start dev this will be this should run nodemon and so I've got no I've got this running on port 5000 currently and inside my index I really don't have any routes yet but what I can do is send my message for hello from server I'll put these in back ticks and now I can put a little um, variable here and I'm, I keep switching back and forth between um, JavaScript and C sharp and so I just had a brain fart and so I forgot my dollar sign um now it'll say hello from server when I hit my route and I'll be able to access that name variable. So just to kind of show you how to create a variable in a .env file and then how to access it, uh, when I hit this backend route, um, I should get that env variable uh, and the variable data out of it. So let's just boot up Postman. And I will make a new collection, call this BRC. BRC, and then I will add a request. It's a get request. HTTP uh, slash API is where this is currently at. API, and I get a message hello from server. It does not have my variable. So. Um, 
there's a couple of steps. You could see that it's not working. There's a couple of steps to add here uh, to get my environment variable working. All right, and so the first step is on our server, we need to import it. So import star as dot end from dot end, and then you run dot end config. Okay, now if I boot that, let me go ahead and uh, I'm also noticing this is not really running node mon the one the way I want it to. Um, so if I run my npm start dev script again, there's some switches to get node mon to run. So I got my server booted back up. And if I hit my route, okay, now I'm actually getting my data out of the .env file. Um, okay, now there, I'm also noticing, um, like if I make a change to my source code, hello from server, exclamation, exclamation, and hit save, uh, normally Nodemon would stop my server from running and rerun rerun my server so I'm noticing that that's not happening um, and so the fix for that is I'm going to do nodemon index.js I'm gonna put a switch on this minus r dot mv slash config so if I close this and I run my npm start dev script and hit save a couple more times um, okay my, that switch did not fix the problem so um, oh I always get my commands npm run dev I was actually running the start script so the 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 way to run a script is with npm run so npm run is going to run a script not npm start I was actually starting node index.js instead of node mod so if I do npm run dev that actually runs the dev script okay and now you notice anytime I make a change to my source code okay and I do that that's just a uh, that's just something I always brain fart on is for lack of a better technical term um, I I always get my start scripts uh, it's npm run and then the name of the script is how you run a particular script okay so now we got .env running, we got nodemon running on this. These are two good things to have. We'll use them all semester. Um, the next thing I want to bring in is um, debug, the debug package, which is going to help us troubleshoot. So npm i debug would encourage you to check out the npm package debug npm js look up debug um, and read about it on its um, on its home page but how to install debug and then how to bring it in and then how to have different channels um, so that's where we're headed we went ahead and installed debug so debug is now a dependency and let's go ahead and bring it in with an import statement import debug from debug and debug server equals debug app colon server okay so now we have this variable called debug server that we can replace a console log. So instead of doing a console log, we can call this debug server. 
And if I do an npm run dev here, um, almost there. So the first step of getting debug to work is give it a server name. So this is the server name, but you'll notice I'm not getting my console log or my debug to actually work. Um, we have to in our .env file. So let me close this down, control C. In my .env file, uh, we have to set a variable for the debug and say that anything beginning with the uh, the word app followed by a colon star, th these are the allowable channels. So I'm going to have app colon server and app colon user and app colon database. And so these are basically the channels that we're allowing for. And so by making this variable and then doing the import and then calling debug server, now you can see we see app server is running on localhost 5000. If I click it, remember that this has a static front page that React is serving up. So um, that's all good. And if I go to slash API, I get a JSON message that says hello from server and it says undefined um, which is the case because why because this environment variable is not accessible in the browser um, I've never tried to actually spit out a the the environment variables are supposed to be accessible by the back end but yeah spinning them to the front end um, not, oh, I somehow broke it. Uh, oh, I took out name. That's why. There we go. So now if I kind of, now, uh, another thing to notice is, um, anytime you make a change to your environment variable, um, you do want to manually close your server and not rely on nodemon to reboot it um, to kind of get those environment variables loaded and now if we bring my name back and if i control click and i go to my slash api route okay okay all good there so those are a couple packages, and again, this is just kind of clean up, getting getting the getting the site ready to move forward and start storing data in Mongo. Um, the next thing that I want to do is extract my routes out of my index.js. So I I do not want my routes kind of hanging out here. Um, so I need to make a new file. Um, and, and I'm gonna follow the syntax that I did last week where I made a folder called routes. And then inside of that folder, I made a subfolder called API. So there's two folders here, one inside of the other. And then inside of the API, I'm gonna make a user.js. And we're going to import express from Express and import debug. And then this will be debug user. Um, so a different kind of console log. And then I make a router and export the router. Const router. And at the very bottom here, I export that router. Export router as user router it's called a named export uh, which allows me to back on the index we got our app uh, we're gonna have to import user router as an again as a named import you can bring it in user router from let's make sure the routes are correct current directory routes api user 
and we got to add the .js. If you don't add that .js there from memory, that does in fact break. So how to bring in um, a named export. And so we have a user router now, which Um, we got our app.use URL encoded. Let's attach the routes kind of at the bottom down here. Um, and so slash API slash user and then user router. And let's see, I got lowercase u there, lowercase u there, so that's all good, lowercase u there. So let's just go to router.git slash list. Okay, and this is going to ping our debug channel that says user list, and it'll send back a little uh, res dot, by the way, status 200 send a little clear text that says user list. So now if I follow my full path, API slash user slash list. API slash user slash list. And I get a status code 200, sending back my user list. And I've, I've got that wired up now. Um, so that we can start putting more routes in here for users. And now this document here allows me to take the uh, HTTP body, so in an HTTP packet, okay, in an HTTP packet, there are um, headers and there are body. And so if I can kind of go into here, like there's different parts of an HTTP request when you break down into packets. Um, and so Here's an HTTP header and kind of some of the information that's in a header. And then there's a body. And so this line right here allows you to take information that's in the body and treat it as JSON, um, which allows us to, inside of our list, like if we were to router.git, um, Sure, like by a profile. Um, well, let's just do user or colon user ID. If you remember this, we did something like get by a user ID and const ID equals rec.params user ID, um, which was allowing us to read from a variable. So that was one way, rec.params, but there was also rec.body. And so uh, we might have an update route, uh, router.post uh, slash update. And in an update route, we were reading from um, the body, rec.body. Um, and so rec.body was an object a JavaScript object. So basically this one liner of code allows us to use Postman and send uh, post requests uh, with values in the body that would be constructed as an object. Okay. Um, all that just to say rec.body, you know, is a JavaScript object. That's, that's possible because of this line right here. Um, there's another one line of code that you pretty much is what I call boilerplate, which is um, express.json. Um, and these lines often go kind of hand in hand. 
uh, these two things. It says treat the body of the URL as JSON objects. Um, and so, let's see, uh, I don't know if that's the right comment. Anyways, this is a boilerplate code that you pretty much, um, I believe, you know, when we start doing more um, form submissions, you know, uh, obviously from a front end web form, um, we need to be able to work with JSON. So I might have uh, confused you there, but, but, um, This allows us to read the body, and this one allows it to treat it like JSON objects. So they, they kind of go hand in hand. Uh, what else? I don't think I have to talk too much about cores right now. Um, OK. So that's kind of all I'm going to do for this one, uh, other than um, redeploy. So we got to the process of deploying to G Cloud. And so now that, you know, this is just, again, just a, a quick video that I wanted to do to kind of get some things up to speed based on what we did last week, um, I want to deploy to G Cloud. Now, uh, cloud.google.com. And if I go to my council, I have different projects. And so the first thing you always want to do is make sure that you're deploying to the right project. And so um, I left off on an issue tracker project. So if I were to look at my, my project in my terminal, you know, it's currently pointed at the issue tracker and that's the wrong project. Um, so as we did before, we need to gcloud uh, set project and change the project in the terminal so we're pointing at the right gcloud config set project to the project ID so gcloud config set project and I'm going to paste in the project ID all right so it says updated property is there a little update to my gcloud terminal commands now if I scroll up, I'm going to go back to my deploy command, gcloud run deploy, and i got to find the name of my service. And so to find out the name of my service, I'm going to go here, and under the navigation menu, uh, we're going to click on cloud run, and it's brc-service. And so I, I did put a little uh, YouTube video on what uh, cloud run is um, as well as uh, you know because if you wanted to actually dive deeper uh, here's a little web page on cloud run uh, cloud.console.com slash run and there's a YouTube video on our playlist now so you can learn a little bit more about cloud run besides just how we're using it uh, but it's a pretty flexible way of deploying applications to Google Cloud. So just throwing that out there. Um, BRC service. So let me back this up. BRC hyphen service. And hit enter for the current directory. And US Central. Let me pause while this spins. Okay. Deployment done. Open it up in browser. Belleville Running Club slash API slash user or users. User singular list. And we get our user list. So we got a front end. We got a back end. It's all working together. We got a few more packages installed and a fresh um, redeployment. So I'm just going to stop it there.